My name is Moses Colbert. I'm the pastor of Faith, Hope, and Love. I am here as an advocate for the homeless. And I thank God for people like Pastor Shannon. There are a lot of other things that they do that they didn't talk about. They supply tents, sleeping bags, a lot of other things. And we would love for the city to partner with us in this endeavor. I had a meeting with you a few years ago, uh, Mayor Reed, about cleaning up Gastonia. Me, you, and Pastor Armstrong. And I told you I was going to open a shelter. I did that. Well, codes prevented, made us shut it up. We are here today because we, there is a problem. We need to help the people that can't help themselves. And I'm asking you for your help. It's been said in the past that I'm hard to deal with. I'm not. It's been said in the past that I break the rules. I don't. It's been said in the past that I escaped the law. I don't. I've not broken any rules. What are the rules that I broke other than love thy neighbor as thyself? That's a, that's a rule that we all must follow. And I'm just here as a voice for the voiceless. So if you could find it in your hearts to send some tents over, stop demonizing this ministry. Let us be a part of the COC again. You know, it looks like that I'm being discriminated against, and it's not just me that you're hurting. It's these people that are, get, that are bearing the brunt of it. These people need your help. And I believe that we can help. We live in a great city here in Gastonia. We've done our part in cleaning up this city. I made good on my word. I told you I was going to do it, and we did it. And now it's on you to help us to help them. I, I wish you, you could find it in your hearts to do so. There's been some of you that have stepped up, and I really appreciate you. And there are some of you more than, that need to step up. And just think about it. It may be them today, but it could be you tomorrow. And in this last seven, six seconds, just know that Matthew 25 and 35 said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. My name is Spike Cohen, and I don't recall the First Amendment having a two-minute limit. But anyway, uh, I'm going to cut to the chase. I was at Faith, Hope, and Love on Saturday, and I watched them do what they do every single day, feeding people in need, keeping to, as your uh, coding, uh, coding people called it, keeping the matters of the faith the main commission that Christians have, which is to feed those in need and to help those in need. And for a moment, I questioned, I had the same question that a lot of folks here probably have. Why are you punishing a man and his congregation for solving the homelessness crisis and helping those in need? But here's the thing, folks. I figured it out. You need a homelessness crisis. You want a homelessness crisis. You want these folks out on the streets and in the woods. You want them doing whatever they need to get by, and you want the public to become angry and fearful and resentful so you can sell them the solution. And if instead you let this man of God and his congregation fix the problem themselves, they're going to start wondering what they need you for. Now, at the base of what you're doing is a complete lack of respect for them as human beings, their lives, their livelihoods, their well-being, their safety, all of it. You do not respect them as people. You see them as objects. They are an opportunity for you to grandstand on your suffering, and the congregation is an obstacle to that opportunity. They are not things. They are people. You have two choices, and this should not be a difficult choice. One you can just let this church help those in need and get out of the way. Or two, you can create the suffering you're creating, and I will personally make sure that everyone in this city, this county, this state, and this country knows who you are, what you've done, and the suffering you're causing. Your choice. This is a bad thing. This is a very bad thing. That place down there that everybody so fears and all this stuff and that is dirty and everything. Okay, people put themselves in positions, but sometimes people are, aren't born. And sometimes there's no help. Mind you, there's no blame on anybody up here. But I just do know that there's a petition being forced to shut down a church and have people with no one else to go being forced to go somewhere else instead of having a lending hand. The fines that are being... Um, levied against this church and property, I find it very disturbing. I would like to see the city, and I know that the city reports to all of you. You are in charge. <clears throat> and I would like to see someone step up and say, let's help, let's make something good happen out of this. 
these fines are not helping, and it doesn't look good for the city. It just looks like it is against helping people. What if these was one of your family? These are God's children, just as much as we are. What happens when they shut this down and these 75 to 125 people have to go? Because they're coming to your backyard. They're coming to the woods behind your house, and they're not going to have running water, and they're not going to have somebody feeding them daily. So you're going to have a big problem on your hands because they won't be in one spot. They'll be scattered out all over the county, and they'll be doing all sorts of things to get by because they have no other option, and that's what you're going to end up pushing them to do. This is a good ministry. I found my faith at Faith, Hope, and Love. I've always loved God, but I found my faith there. This is nothing but God's love that that man right there that just spoke puts out. He's the guy dealing with the problem. So when you shut him down, I promise you this, you're going to have a lot on your hands that you just did not want. I can tell you one thing. You come to steal my church, you can drag me off or burn that house of God down around me because I ain't moving. I will not hit you, but you will drag me out or do whatever. And I've seen how you, your southern hospitality how you treat my brother, Joshua Rohr, so I have no doubt that what you're capable of, your force, and I'm not scared of it. I want to ask you, did you have a nice sleep last night? Did you have a nice breakfast this morning? Did you have a nice dinner? These people, our people, don't have that privilege. What are we doing about it? Nothing. We're sitting there finding the money, 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 but we're doing anything to help them? No. Well, these are people. These are souls. These people need our help. Because you got a lot of stuff going on there nobody knows about. I know about it. I see it every night. But y'all are trying to do anything about it. But y'all want somebody to go in there and do what he's supposed to do. But y'all try to bash this man with all the fines. You know how many you know how much fines he's got? I don't know how much he's got. But y'all not trying to do anything about it. That's all y'all do is keep on paddling on him. Like it's all right to do. It's not all right to do. I have uh, witnessed a lot that has happened, has went on, and it doesn't mean to just shut it down like another door closes just because something happens. Um, we are people. We bleed the same way you do. Um, we may live in tents or in wood shacks. It's still a home. I no longer call it a church. I call it home now. Just please don't shut it down. I don't think Christ would put people out because they have problems or because they have issues or because they don't have a place to stay. I don't have a criminal record. You can check it. Never had a criminal record my whole life. Did everything by the book, but I ended up homeless. Not because I wanted to be, not because anything I'd done wrong, but because I guess it was just meant to be. And I meet a lot of people out here that are good people. They really are. They just have issues. They have problems, like everybody in this room. They're in a day go by, no matter who you are, from, from the mayor to the, the president. You have problems. We all do. But it's about love, not about hating. And if you put these people out, how do you think they're going to feel like you hate them? And the Bible says, he that hated his brother is a murderer. You know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. I have an American flag shirt on. We're all Americans, from the tent to the White House. At this point, these fines are not on Moses. Look around the room. Listen to the people you're asking. These are the people you are punishing. The people here who rely on that place every single day for a hot meal, something we all take for granted. Do you know what's dangerous? You shutting down this ministry and taking away the meal of every single person that counts on it every day on day one. Where are they going to eat enough? Be humans before politicians, because this is not going to go away, and I promise you, you are not on the right side. The community will rally around a church that you are weaponizing the codes to destroy. The people are upset, as you can see. And I think it's time that y'all do the right thing. Uh, there's still time for y'all to do the right thing. They're seeking compassion. I'm seeking justice. I mean, it makes sense that y'all would want to shut down what Moses is doing because then all those people that are unhoused will be out in the street like I was and then your officers can violate their rights and uh, brutalize them and take their freedom. I think y'all need to really take a look at what y'all are doing. And if you don't, I think that the people are going to stand up and vote y'all out uh, because 
You're just wrong. You're wrong. The complaints made against Faith, Hope, and Love and Pastor Moses are that they call on the police for assistance too much, their camp is an eyesore, and the trailers meant for re-education and rehabilitation are a hazard to their health. To these accusations, I say, how much more will the police be contacted when these unsheltered individuals are purged from the only safe place that they have known and start looking for shelter under bridges and car washes and on the sidewalks in front of your local businesses? How much more of an eyesore will their tents be when they are out in the open for all to see and not sheltered by the trees that currently surround them and protect them from the elements? How much more of a health hazard will it be for these individuals to be unsheltered and abandoned rather than fed and allowed to be inside, even if just for a little while each day? These are the things that we take for granted and no longer think about because they have become second nature to those who can afford it. Those unsheltered individuals needing assistance should seek out shelters and local churches known for helping those in need if they find themselves on the street. Should I assume that you meant they should seek out any church but this one? I ask you to think about the faces of those who are less fortunate than us because if faith, hope, and love is disbanded, you will be seeing a lot more of them. Yeah, some of them got problems. They drink. They do other drugs. But I, I go to my man's church right there. That's my hometown. You know, these are my people. I came to Pastor Moses January of this year. I was homeless. He gave me a place to stay. This man's a good man. Like, like he said, he could be one of y'all's family. It could be one of y'all out there and know where to go and go to this man. I need a place to live. So please help him keep his place open for us because we have nowhere to go. My family turned their back on me. I'm by myself. I don't have a soul to turn to but this man right here and his wife. So please help him keep it open. Y'all think about that. Because he is a very good man.